Hey guys, welcome to another pen review video here on The Pen Habit. Now, this has been a much requested video, one that I have been uh, kind of sitting on for several months, not because I had any reason to sit on it, just because I've had a lot of other pens to get to. But uh, I wanted to get to this one today. So this is the Canalea Pen Company Kaha Kai. This pen is from the team of Hugh and Carol Scher, who own uh, Canalea Pen Company. They founded it with their son, the masculinely named Matt. And, uh, and uh, they have got uh, some really, really beautiful materials. But one of the things that impressed me about their entire ecosystem is that it's built around a really solid foundation, a brand, an idea, an ethos, all kind of combined together. Everything about the brand was thought through from from beginning to end. And I'll show you kind of what I mean along the way. So this is the box that comes in. It is a lovely walnut box. Uh, it's handmade here in the U.S. Nice dark stain on it. It uh, has this belly band on the top, and the belly band is made out of a paper embedded with wildflower seeds. So if you decide you don't want to keep your packaging and you've got some place for it, you can always just plant the belly band in the ground and let it start growing for you if you want. I'll keep mine because I generally keep my packaging. Then you've got this really lovely hibiscus logo that has been burned into the wood. The lid of the box, oh, got it backwards here. The lid of the box is is magnetized, so it holds closed with a nice little magnet. You can see that right there. This is a pen that is built around a photo. So when the family goes to Hawaii, they take photos of different landscapes and animals and things like that. And those photos inspire the design of the materials from which the pen is made. This one being Beach Kahakai. Uh, this is the photo from which it comes. And you can see here, it's a really beautiful photograph, just kind of by itself. Uh, really lovely photo, and uh, we'll show you how well they do when they uh, with the matching in just a second here. So this is the rest of the box. It comes with some tissue paper and a couple of cartridges. And then the pen comes inside this raw cotton cloth with the silk-screened hibiscus flower logo on the top. Now, let me show you how this pen matches the photo. So here you go. This is the Kanalea Pen Company Kaha Kai. So you can see the custom blank maker they used for this pen did really quite a, a phenomenal job in matching the colors of the photograph with the materials of the pen. So let's kind of go through the design of the pen. It is a flush design. So the cap and the barrel are flush with each other. There's no step down. Normally, I don't, I'm not too particular one way or the other about a flush design versus a stepped design, but I think with this particular material, it makes sense to keep it as featureless as possible. It's a desk pen, there's no clip at all, and it is a little on the long side. Top of the cap has a, a gold plated medallion of this hibiscus logo, hibiscus flower logo that is inset into the top of the cap. Then you've got kind of rounded corners. And it tapers down slightly down to rounded corners down here. Now, the material is amazing. There's a lot of sparkle and motion in the material. If you look really closely at the sand portion, you can see little flecks of copper and gold powder interspersed with kind of the tan color and the transitions between the colors and how they kind of swirl together really is, it's pretty darn neat looking. The threads are tight and smooth, super smooth, come out like this. And unfortunately, this is not a postable pen. So it, I mean, it, you can kind of force it on there, but I wouldn't. Um, it doesn't post very deeply at all. This is not a pen that's really meant to be posted. But I kind of wish it could be posted or that the cap had some sort of roll stopper on it. I would almost like to see the hibiscus logo that's on the top of the pen on a roll stopper on the side of the, the cap, simply because I think that would help keep the pen from rolling off the desk. This pen, because it's completely round, if your desk's not level, it's just gonna roll itself right away. Um, yeah, and you have to be real careful about that. So that's just something to keep in mind. If you're kind of a klutz or you are afraid of dropping your pen, this might not be the right option for you simply because it could roll right off the desk. So beautifully finished, nice, really solid polish, just glows. The pen just absolutely glows. And I'll tell you, I get 
a lot of comments about this pen when I'm just at work. People are like, that's, gor- that's a gorgeous pen. And it really is. It was an, the absolute attention grabber of the DC show in 2016. It was the one most people were talking about. It really was um, their, their attention grabbing pens. So if you're into understated, again, this might not be the right one for you. Anyway, getting back to under the cap. So we'll set the cap aside. So the pen has a really nice long section and there's ink on the section because I just re-inked the pen. So let me clean that off just a moment here. (laughs) So at the DC show, I talked with Hugh about their pens. And one of the things that impressed me about their research and their prep work in getting the brand together was they went online and went into the community and did a lot of research about what people are liking and what they're asking for and looking for and tried to incorporate those things into the brand. There are a few other brands that are doing that these days. I'm I'm thinking of Twisby, for instance, but you don't find most of the brands going out there and doing market research and really studying what people are interested in. They're, They're gonna make their pens and hopefully people like it as opposed to saying, hey, here's what the community is is asking for. And that's something I feel that Kanalea did actually really nicely. So along those lines, nice concave section here. It's longer, so in the hand, it doesn't, you're not sitting on the threads. Even if you were, the threads are super smooth, so they're not bad. There is a step down here because it's a flush cap design. So you'd have to hold the pen way, way, way up here, which I can't imagine there would be many people who would do that. Apologize for the Band-Aid, by the way. I uh, I cut myself pretty bad on my finger trying to pull a thread off of a toy. I, I kind of garroted my finger with the thread and it hurt. Um, the pen itself is eyedropperable, so it's all acrylic. You could fill up the barrel and it would hold a nice amount in there. It also uses standard international cartridges and converters, both long and short. It also comes with a threaded converter. That's another one of those things where they said, hey, we're hearing a lot of people say they like threaded converters, uh, keeps them from coming out, that sort of thing. So I am thrilled about that because I really prefer threaded converters over non-threaded converters. So that works out really nicely as well. So in the hand, very comfortable. The section isn't too wide, it isn't too narrow. It's a nice middle section and that concave shape helps a lot as does the longer length of the section. It fits nicely in the web of my hand. It's actually quite light, sitting at only 18 grams uncapped. So it's really not a heavy pen, but it's not so light that you feel like it's gonna fly away. It's got just a tiny little bit of heft to it, but enough to let you know that it's there. The nib itself is a number six Yovo steel nib. Now, at the time of purchase, the only nibs they had available were were steel nibs. They have since started incorporating gold nibs on the website as well. I'll get to the steel nib a little bit after the writing sample, but uh, this is something of a, a little bit of a letdown on the pen as a whole. Everything else about the pen was so thoroughly thought through and thoroughly incorporated and the whole brand and the ethos was was incorporated into the whole ecosystem of this pen that the nib just feels kind of generic by comparison. I would have loved to, to have seen a Canalea hibiscus engraved on the nib or something like that to kind of tie it all together. The color, the bicolor nib, I actually think works really well with the the turquoise and the the sandy material. So that doesn't bother me at all. And it's a really nice nib. But again, we'll get to that when we get to the writing.
Now, I've been using fountain pens for just shy of four years at the time of recording this, and in that time, I have used an awful lot of number six Yovo made nibs. Yovo is one of the two major German manufacturers of nibs, the other one being Bach, and their nibs are used everywhere. They're used in Twisby pens, in Edison pens, in Franklin Christoph pens. Most custom makers use them. Uh, I'm thinking of Rene Meeks from Scriptorium Pens and Jonathan Brooks from Carolina Pen Company and Sean Newton and Carl Fisher and, 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 and. Yovo nibs are easy to find. They're consistent. They're good writers. They're well-made and they are in general kind of the go-to nib for people who aren't having nibs custom made for themselves. So when I say that out of all of the Yovo nibs I've ever used, I think this might be my favorite steel nib of all of those Yovo nibs. Know that I'm not coming from a place of complete ignorance like most of my reviews are. I'm actually coming from a place of, of a decent bit of experience because I have used a lot of steel Yovo nibs in my time, in my admittedly short time. So there's always a, a bit of variation from nib to nib and things like that. But the work that was done on this nib prior to sending it out turned this nib into something other than just a generic writing experience. And that's always my initial gut response when I hear that a pen comes with a number six Yovo steel nib. It's like, oh, it'll write. It's just going to be really generic. And that was my fear when I first picked up this Kaha Kai. It was an unfounded fear. This has been smoothed and wettened and made into a really, really lovely writing experience. So let me show you what I mean. So, you know, that I've said this many times before, but one of the, the true keys to understanding if it's a good nib or not is, will it just kind of float across the paper? Can it, can you write without putting any pressure on the pen at all? And if the answer is no, then it's not a well-adjusted nib. Now, I have a lot of nibs that write well um, and that, that will kind of float across the paper, but a lot of times they'll come with some tooth or um, some, you know, some unpleasant friction with the paper. Such is not the case with this pen. It is very, very smooth. I'd say probably a one and a half to a two on the Matt Armstrong feedback scale, one of the smoothest steel nibs I've ever used. It's wet, it, a little on the wet side of moderate, and I can show you what I mean here. So here is one square of wetness, and here's a, a couple squares with a couple passes. So it's, it's a nice wet pen. You get a nice long streak there. This is a lighter ink and it's not one of the, the wettest inks I've ever used. I was using um, KWZ menthol green in the pen prior to this review and that is a wetter ink and it was even wetter than this is here. So this nib has been adjusted to be wet like the ocean it represents. It's, uh, it's, it's really quite a lovely writing experience if you like a wet nib. It is a medium and it tends to run just a tiny bit on the wide side for a medium. And I do mean a tiny bit. It's, it's a pretty medium medium. And I think it's more when you've got a wetter ink, it will, the line will appear to be a little bit wider otherwise. With this particular ink, it sticks kind of right in the middle of medium. It's super comfortable in the hand. I haven't had any issues with hard starting or skipping. We've got reverse writing here. It writes, it's a little toothy, not scratchy per se, but a little bit toothy, nice extra fine line there. So it, it works out pretty well, all things considered. It is a steel nib and it doesn't give you a lot of line variation like most of the steel nibs don't. Uh, you can get a little bit of wetness here, as you can see from some of the shading stuff, but this is not a nib that is meant to be pushed. I love the writing experience. It's a rock solid writer. It's very comfortable in the hand. I can go pages and pages without any problems. It is, it's a really, really nice writing experience. And one of the nicest writing experiences I've ever had with your standard Yovo style, number six, steel nibs. So when the Canalea Pen Company rather crashed onto the world like the waves and the photos that their pens represent, uh, they were, there was a pretty immediate 
backlash against the pricing. So the Kanalea Kahakai fountain pen with a steel nib retails for $395. That is on the, the high side for a steel nibbed pen. Now, like I've said before, I'm not one of those people who assumes that any pen over X dollars needs to have a gold nib. That's not, to me, it's more about the overall aesthetic and the writing and all of that, but I understand it. I had a couple people email me and even say things like, it's just an expensive Yovo nib holder. And I don't buy that argument. This is more than just a, here's a, here's a rod of, of acrylic that you can screw a nib unit into. Yes, it is that, but it's also a lot more. Uh, it is an idea. It is an ethos. It is custom acrylics, which can be very expensive to have produced. It is a lot of really fine attention to detail, which you don't find in a lot of other pens, things like this little medallion and the box and things like that. Is it expensive? Yes, absolutely. Were it just a few dollars more expensive, I probably wouldn't buy it with a steel nib. So what it boils down to in the end is, is it worth it? And that's a difficult question to answer. It is for me, but, and I'll, I'll tell you why. Yes, you can get less expensive pens, even less expensive custom-made pens from, from other makers with acry different acrylics and things like that. These are exclusive acrylics. They are really, really well-made, and it's more than just a, hey, here's a one-off kind of a pen. I compare this to something like the Edison Menlo, which uh, is a kind of a custom order pen from, from the Edison Pen Company. Those sell for about $350 with a steel nib. You're picking the material you want, and you do get an unusual filling system, which I think is great. This is a standard international cartridge converter. What you're getting is a really beautiful material and top-notch craftsmanship. Is that enough for you? If it's not, that's fine. Yes, it's expensive. It's enough for me though, because it feels like more than just a custom pen. It feels like an entire package. You're buying this whole thing. It's, it's, it's everything kind of all together. And I love the material. Yeah, it's worth it to me, barely, but it's still worth it to me. And I'll probably end up getting another one or two because I love some of the other models just as much as I, I love this one. So that has been my review of the Kanalea Pen Company, Kahakai, the beach. And I really do appreciate you being here. If you have any questions or comments, as always, you're welcome to leave them on YouTube or over on penhabit.com on the written review. I would encourage you to go over to penhabit.com and check out some of the photos of this pen because some of the up-close photos are really quite beautiful. And of course, we will see you here next time on The Pen Habit. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.